from mushrooms to this. Indonesian tech startup Microtech is on a mission to transform the fashion and furniture industry. Instead of using animal, we are using mushroom technology. Our mycelium leather is more sustainable, durable, it's affordable. And the big orders are coming in. But can they meet demand? It's a unique product. However, I do have some concern with scalability costs. And are they targeting the right market? My big question is, who is this brand for? Three goals in three months. Microtech takes on the Ventrepreneur's Challenge. We are a biotech company who develop uh, animal leather replacement. We started in 2015. We have five co-founders, different backgrounds. So let's meet the team and see where the magic happens. Mycotech wants to change the world by giving consumers a more sustainable alternative to conventional leather. Based in the outskirts of Bandung in Indonesia, the startup produces material made from mushroom mycelium. Just like how plants have roots, mycelium is the root part of the mushroom. So as you can see here, um, this is our workshop. We just use the mycelium part here. And then we transform it into different kind of shapes. Like this one, a simple box or a complex shapes. It only takes five days to grow and to harvest the leather. After we harvest the leather, there's still a byproduct. And then we turn it into panels. Our unique selling proposition is our product is sustainable because we don't need to grow animal for about two years. We just grow the mushroom in five days. And cost-wise, we consume less water, less energy, and also less resources because it's not come from cows we use agricultural waste. So it's basically a closed loop product. From waste to product, it's an upcycling. The team spent about three years on research and development and produced its first commercial product in 2017. From one line of production, we can produce leather and panels. And the leather goes to the brand and designers. So we co-creating with them to create a watch. Uh, sneakers, boots, and the bag. To produce the mushroom mycelium, sawdust is mixed with various nutrients to create the perfect breeding ground for mushrooms. This is then placed with mushroom spores in individual bags called bag logs. We put all the bag logs here in incubation room for about one month. After the leather is harvested, it is treated and coloured. So we started a Mycotech since 2015. So back then we sell edible mushroom. However, we see there is a potential in the technology. Our business model is business to business. And our main positioning is as a material producers. Currently, we are focusing on five potential clients. Three of them are SMEs and two of them are multi-billion dollar company, uh, big brands. With big clients come big demands. Microtech must find a way to increase its production capacity and quickly. So to manufacture a pair of shoes, it requires six sheets of Mylia. Microtech's current production is about 8,400 sheets per annum, or about 4,200 square feet, which can roughly produce 1,400 pairs of shoes. Still a far cry from where Microtech wants to be with 1 million square feet. I think there are three challenges we need to overcome. So the first one is how we deliver the Kickstarter projects. Um, the second one is how we deliver the Osaka exhibition. And the third one, the biggest one, I think, um, how we scale up the production up to 1 million square feet per annum. Actually, we have been uh, quite late 
for the delivery of the Kickstarter mm -hmm. around one or two months late. Why do we delay the delivery? Yeah, because of uh, our last month's uh, contamination rate is quite high. But hopefully starting this month, mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty confident that we can deliver them. About Osaka, what is challenges we are currently facing? The challenge is how to choose the best design. We already make some prototypes and hopefully by the end of this month we could have the final decision. Regarding the 1 million square foot annum that we are currently aiming for, do you have any strategy to that? The first strategy is from the production. We need to create more proper procedure for all process. The second thing is um, about the funding. To get some advice on expanding the business, Adi heads to Singapore to meet with venture capitalist Leslie of Red Dot Ventures. So how big is your plant currently? And what's your plan in growing the facility? We already have a pilot plant. We can replicate it uh, into a bigger scale. So the plan now is about 200 square meter. I think for if we want to scaling up, um, it's quite easy. So what do you expect the investment to be? We will raise about 10 million. So the 6 million, we're going to use it as focus on production facility. So the rest, 4 million, is focused on working capital. In the next year, in 2021, they can start produce. So if you can tap 1 million square feet, it can generate potentially for 2 million US dollar per year. You are trying to raise 10 million dollars, and that 10 million, the bulk of it, 6 million, is going to go into building your production manufacturing facility. And you suppose to generate $2 million out of that $6 million facility. To me, that number in terms of the investment versus the revenue that you're going to generate doesn't look like it's in line. I do have some concern with scalability costs, particularly the manufacturing facility and the type of revenue it would generate, which really sounds like quite a costly facility. As Adi looks to rework the funding strategy, Aldi lines up meetings with some local partners to check on the Kickstarter campaign deliveries. Indonesian startup Microtech is looking for ways to increase production to meet orders that are starting to roll in from the material that they make from mushrooms. They've roped in the local community to help boost supplies. But first, they have to teach the local farmers how to grow the right kind of mushrooms. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Hey, oh. Bu, Bukamala, apa kabar? Baik. Selama ini kan udah bantu Microtech nih. Udah berapa lama ya, Bu? Udah dari tahun 15, 2015 di Mikotek, ibu sambil nunggu panen, ya, kerja Wah. di Mikotek. Iya, ya, makasih banyak ya ibu sudah bantuin. Gimana bu selama ini bantuin kita senang atau enggak? Atau... Ya, ibu senang tuh ada pemasukan uang yang sambil tambahan nunggu panen, gitu. ya. tambahan <laughs> untuk biaya. Ya. Michael Tech empowers women like Madam Komala by teaching them new skills and giving them work at their factory. Pekerjaan ibu di kebun, pagi-pagi jadwal, pagi-pagi ke kebun sampai jam 9. Kalau udah jam 9 pulang baru ke Mikotek. Kalau hari Sabtu ke seminggu teh kebanyakan tiga kali atau dua kali ada yang empat kali gitu nggak tentu sih di Makatek. So we are here in Cimahi, where the Makatek located. This area is one of the biggest mushroom producer in West Java. There's a lot of mushroom farmer here. They grow oyster mushroom like this one, but somehow it's not suitable to grow this mushroom as our material. So our team come up with the idea of having a different substrate, different mushroom type. We call it mushroom lingzi. So we're very grateful to collaborate with local farmers here because first, they locally source the raw material. 
Second thing, they already have the technology, so we don't have to reinvent the wheels. We just tweak the methods. The third thing is easy, easy to scale up the production. They are also encouraging local farmers like Madam Komala to switch to farming lingzhi mushrooms. Kesulitannya nggak tahu pemasaran gitu, nggak tahu apa pemasukannya kemana gitu uh, jamur lingzhi itu. Mushroom farmers here are facing some challenges to grow lingzhi mushroom because usually they just grow oyster mushroom. What we do is we give them more knowledge how to grow this mushroom, how to handle the mushroom, um, so in the future they can easily grow this type of mushroom. In downtown Bandung, Aldi is about to meet Mycotech's design partners. Pala Nusantara designs watches for Mycotech, and they must have 92 watches ready for the Kickstarter campaign. Kickstarter is a crowdfunding platform where people can raise funds. Mycotech's production hit a speed bump following a contamination issue at the plant. We're actually in the mid of starting our first batch for the Kickstarter program. We actually received the batch from you uh, last month and, and probably targeting our, our production plan in October will have probably 70 to 80 percent yeah. of the whole order from Kickstarter. We just have to make sure that we will give you uh, mycel the mycelium leather. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, I think the, the, the punctuality here is the key. We are currently on track with that. Since uh, the problem with contamination is no longer existed, fortunately, Mycotech have solved that problem with, with more sterilized process. All these hoping that things are going smoothly with their other design partner in the Kickstarter campaign. Calfcraft is another one of our partners, and I'm here to check on the progress of the Kickstarter campaign. Their Kickstarter commitment, 25 card holders. Is there any new features that you want to put in in the card wallet? Yes, uh, di dalam furinya itu kita ada ini. What are the customers saying? Mungkin dia merasa bingung, jadi kayak ini sesuatu yang langka. Thank you so much, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Rizky has been in the leather business since 2010. He picked up the trade from his parents. Feedback from Risky is extremely valuable for Mycotech. Mycotech waktu itu masuk mungkin dua tahun lalu. Untuk pertama kali mendapatkan milia mungkin karena kualitasnya masih gampang robek. Jadi kita e, mengakalinya dengan melapisi milianya dulu dengan kain. Dan tantangan lainnya mungkin dulu milia masih terkesan basah agak lembab jadi untuk lem yang kita gunakan yang biasa kita gunakan kan lem lem yang basicnya e, minyak jadi dia nggak nempel makanya harus diakalin lagi sama lem putih lem putih itu kan basicnya air kalau saya lihat makin ke sini sih emang makin membaik ya jadi kayak pas pas saya minta ini kalau bisa bahannya jangan terlalu lembab mereka bisa memenuhinya the kickstarter deliveries are back on track despite the setback from contamination but the Mycotech team is running out of time to finalize the product lineup for the exhibition in Osaka. We still need to find a better fashion of the pattern. Uh, living and design exhibition in Intex Osaka, This Indonesian startup produces bi material from mushrooms, and the team is looking forward to showcasing products made from what they grow at the 2019 Living and Design Exhibition in Osaka, Japan. The event is now just weeks away. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Osaka Exhibition will be held on the October. Yeah. yeah. How's the progress? Yeah. Uh, we haven't made a decision which one will we bring to Osaka, but we all have made some alternative for the products and we make a uh, furniture and some installation 
Uh, these are uh, the furniture, and we already made the prototype too. Well, what is it? It's a bio bowl, and we try to bend it by oh, make oh. some pattern using laser cut, so it could be bent like this. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think we can uh, develop more about this um, preliminary design, and, and yeah. how about the shipping? How we ship to Osaka? We, yeah. Because it's require a lot of um, yeah. volume. I think it's better for us to meet a modular furniture or installation, so we could keep the shipping efficient. And I think uh, since we're using this, it's you can use a flat pack system. That's a good idea. I think we, we should make it simpler. Yeah. I think Osaka is quite a great space, so we should focus on one piece, like yeah. a really good one. The centerpiece. Yeah, centerpiece. We still need to find the bed the better fashion of the pattern. We still have like two months. Okay, I think we, we can meet the deadline. After some trial and error, the team is ready to show off their best in Osaka. Good morning, everyone. Uh, right now, uh, we are in Osaka, and we will attend the uh, Living and Design exhibition in Intex Osaka, just right on the corner. The team has decided that the centerpiece for the exhibition will be a display of lampshades made out of Biobo. Biobo is a board composite made out of mycelium and does not contain any harmful chemicals. It is malleable and easy to transport. Also on display, a range of Microtech products, from shoes to watches. The exhibition in Osaka is not the only event Microtech is attending. Over in Singapore, Adi is representing the company in a fashion incubator program. Hopefully with this program, I can learn about fashion industry and be market ready. The Bridge Fashion Incubator, or TBFI, is a tough initiative. We're from Textile and Fashion Federation. I hope that at the end of these 30 weeks, every brand will really have the set of tools that they will need to see them through growing their business. For Microtech, vegan leather is much needed in the market now. There are very few players in the world that do this. We were all very excited to to help them and nurture them and bring them on board. But Adi is unsure whether Microtech should use the term vegan leather for the biomaterials that it produces. He asks brand consultant Yog for advice. Yes, indeed. What do you think about um, adding vegan leather as our value proposition? I think the word itself is um, a kind of um, um, a kind of fighting word that people use a lot pro and against and it's terrible and it's great and everything so so there's this big discussion going on I think you narrow your target group mm. if you do that because the vegans they have a good skill of finding things mm. that are vegan so they will find you anyway mm. but others could be um, driven away just by that word so I wouldn't use the word I would just tell it as it is this is my brand and uh, this is what it's made of. Whoever likes it should go for it. Uh -huh. okay. yeah, Shall we go and have a discussion? Yes. Okay. Things and uh, it's good for you. When you came up with a brand, you came up with a name. The name is what? So Microtech, Microtech is our company name. Okay, but that's not the brand name. Mm -hmm. So for the leather products like this, we call it Mylea. Stands for Mycelium Leather. Okay, but people won't know that. Um, people will know that. Oh. Um, so we put a Mylea logo on this product, let's say in, in the lining, in the packaging, uh, or in a label as well. But it doesn't mean anything, right? So people will be maybe wondering what it means. How will they know? Yeah, so um, because what we do is we collaborate with brands. We tell our story like in our environmental impact, uh, what, how we made this product uh, to the end customer. And somehow the end customer uh, knows, oh, okay, this leather, mushroom leather is made by Mycatech and they have brand of Mylea. Mm. Because naming is really important, right? The name can say something about the product, what it is, or it can be just be some arbitrary name and you just have to push 
and have a lot of brand communication to fill the name with meaning. Before they even see a product, they need to be interested. How will they find out? Yes, um, they will find out about our brand in social media channel and our website. If you're lucky enough, I go on YouTube, I look at different videos and maybe I'm interested in alternative mm -hmm. materials and I may find your video. Exactly. And then it's a really, really terrible video <laughs> that my little niece, who's eight, could have done. Mm. Because it has emojis, it has terrible music. So is this the kind of impression you want to create for your brand? So we published that video a year ago. Uh, at that moment, actually, we just know, oh, OK, we can make this material. And then at that time, we don't have that kind of budget to create a brand persona. We want to validate, uh, OK, we can pre create this product. I have no problem with what you show. I have a problem with how you show it, <laughs> right? Because for a brand, every single point where the consumer has some contact with the brand is a touch point, mm -hmm. right? And every touch, points, touch point creates an impression. I like how brutally honest your comments on our video. And now we are hiring brand agency to improve our video and website. So over the past three months, we take steps to reach 1 million square feet production per annum. And that's why we are looking for next fundraising. The second one is preparing new facility. And the third one is collaborating with more brand designers to book the orders. So currently we produce 4,200 square feet per annum. Um, we want to scale it to 60,000 by 2021 and the following year 250,000. Hopefully by 2023 we can reach 1 million square feet per annum. The very Kickstarter campaign we received 150 orders. We faced problem in July about contamination. However, um, the team has already resolved the problem. Right now we have complete 40% of the deliveries, and hopefully by end of this year, we complete all the orders. So the Osaka exhibition is a success. This is our first time entering Japan market. This will give us a confidence for us to explore and expand to other overseas markets.